everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Stasia and I have recently lost 50 pounds or I think even a little bit over 50 pounds at this point following a whole food plant-based diet. And before I started my own personal weight loss journey, I was always, you know, on YouTube, on different platforms, Google, whatever the case, always kind of searching for what worked for other people, you know, like what did somebody do to get that weight off? So that's kind of what inspired today's video. So today I want to share the five foods that I feel that have really helped me the most in terms of getting this 50 pounds off. But before I jump into the video, I just wanted to share a quick little side story that I thought was very sweet and touched my heart. Um, I had one of my followers reach out to me. Now she did ask to remain anonymous, so I'm going to keep it that way. However, um, she did say it was okay to share her story. And that is that she is finally down 22 and a half pounds for the first time in two years. She said that losing weight has been a struggle her entire life and she stumbled upon my channel and ended up grabbing a copy of my newest weight loss recipe ebook and followed all the recipes in there. But she said that my shakes, like myself, have been a huge part of her weight loss journey. But the part that I really wanted to share that I thought was sweet and really made me feel, you know, this is why I do what I do, um, was that she actually grabbed a copy of one of my weight loss recipe ebooks while they were on sale for only five dollars and she was just so thankful that it was at a price that she was able to afford because she's on disability and doesn't have a lot of money coming in so she just expressed how thankful she was that she was actually able to afford the book and the recipes and in turn it turned her whole life around so because of that sweet story and her sharing that with me i am putting all of my weight loss recipe ebooks on sale all three of them for only ten dollars now that is a really reasonable price because the original price of these books when i first put them out were closer to 15 to 20 dollars per book so to get all three for only ten dollars is you know it just doesn't really get much better than that these recipes are quite literally the exact recipes that I have been eating to get the weight off and I've heard from many of you who are also having tremendous success. So with that being said, if you're also on a health or weight loss journey and you're in need of some more weight loss friendly recipes, then feel free to check out my books while they are on sale. I will have the link posted in my description box below. All right, so let's get into it. So my weight loss journey has been an interesting one. It has kind of been all over the map, you know, up, down, eat this, don't eat that over the years, constantly trying to figure it out, like almost desperately trying to figure it out. So I've said many times in my videos before that I am not the person that just had some pregnancy weight, but you know, prior to that been thin my whole life and got the weight off and now I'm here to tell you how easy it is. Um, no, my channel is all about a real weight loss struggle that I've dealt with all my life being up, down, just constantly in this space of trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? So finally, in these past several months, I have figured it out and things have finally started to click. Now, if you're interested in finding out exactly what I've done to get this weight off, then I will have a ton of my videos posted in my description box below. So I encourage you to go check those out because I do go into great detail there. So for today's video, I'm just going to keep it to the five foods that I feel have been, you know, the strongest supporters in my weight loss journey. All right, so with that being said, the first one I wanna talk about are beans. So if you're a follower of mine, then you probably already know that beans are one of my favorite starches and have been a huge part in my weight loss journey. And the reason for that is because beans are just so full of fiber and protein, and they tend to keep me full for a really long period of time. Now, I know a lot of people struggle with eating beans because for some people that can't properly digest them, they can cause a lot of digestive stress. So what I would say to that is go slowly. So if you're one of these people that it causes a lot of gas for you, then I would just recommend starting off with even a tablespoon or you know, quarter of a cup or just whatever you like. Just go very, very slowly and see how your body tolerates that. And then you can work your way up from there over time. But for me, I don't have any issues digesting them anymore. I did many years ago before I fixed my gut issues, but now I have no problem. And another side tip I will give is that I personally like making my beans in the Instant Pot. I just find that by soaking them first, usually overnight, and then throwing them in the Instant Pot, it really, really, really reduces any type of gas. Just with that soaking, and then there's something about 
cooking them in um, a pressure cooker that apparently helps with gas. If you wanna know more details about that, then just a quick Google search can help you. However, I personally can say from my experience that it has made an incredible difference. So if you are someone that struggles, you could give that a try as well. However, I literally consume beans every single day, like every day. And the easiest way that I was able to get them in was through my fiber protein shakes. Now, if you're not new here, you already know all about my fiber protein shakes because I I scream about them from the rooftops but with good reason because they have been a huge part of my weight loss journey so I actually created from my head a handful of recipes that taste super delicious I promise you you cannot taste the beans and they were purposely designed to be calorie dense to keep you full so if you're wanting to have it as a meal then you absolutely can now every day I was able to get in half a cup all the way up to one cup of beans in these shakes just depending on how hungry I am and I couldn't taste the beans at all. But by drinking these fiber protein shakes, they actually kept me full for hours. And as a busy mom, always running in and out of the house, that type of thing, it was super helpful because of how easy it was. It wasn't the same as having to prepare a whole meal. And for me, sometimes when I think of beans, I think more like tacos and burritos and you know that kind of thing, like Mexican food, which I love that as well. Love, 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 but I'm not always in the mood for it. So with these shakes, it was just such an easy, easy way to get the beans in without even knowing I'm getting the beans in. I drank one of these pretty much every single day, sometimes as like an actual meal and then other times just as a snack if I was needing like something delicious because my flavors are like Snickers, brownie, birthday cake, like they're really, really delicious. So I would just have these sometimes as a snack as well. Now I am currently trying to break a plateau. Once I hit around the 50 pound mark, things started to slow down for me. So I am back at it. I'm drinking my shakes every single day, loving it. And in fact, I have a bunch of new recipes coming for you guys. I have been so excited in my kitchen making these recipes. A lot of you guys asked for, you know, some fiber protein shake recipes that had no bananas. For some of you who can't tolerate bananas or allergies, that type of thing. I have some coming, I got you. And also just different flavors, some, you know, fruity flavors, just lots of good stuff coming. So I cannot wait to share that with you. But anyways, I am back at my shakes every single day and I really feel like they're starting to make a difference again. So if you are interested in checking out my shakes, then I can post this video in my description box below. It will give all seven days worth of recipes. You can have one every day or just have the same one every day if you find one that you really like. Or you can find a whole chapter all seven recipes are there in my newest weight loss recipe ebook. Now the recipes in this book are the exact recipes that I was eating to get those first 30 pounds off or so. So there's a whole chapter in there with those shakes if you're interested in checking them out. But even if the shakes are not your jam, you know, you're not interested in drinking them, no problem. I would still say, you know, really try to up your bean game. Um, I know a lot of people talk about potatoes in this way of eating and that's coming next. I'm a huge fan of potatoes as well. But I am a huge fan of beans. I really feel like maybe even slightly more than potatoes, beans keep me fuller longer. I, I don't know, I've just had such amazing luck with them that I cannot seem to stress it enough for any of you who still might be struggling to get some weight off. All right, so with that being said, the next one I'm going to talk about are potatoes. Now, much like the beans, potatoes have been a huge part of my weight loss journey as well. I love me some potatoes, one, because they just taste so amazing, two, they're extremely versatile, and three, much like beans, they keep me really, really full. Often I like having potatoes just already made up, you know, from my Instant Pot, or sometimes I bake them. I also like to make them into oil-free French fries. One of my current favorite recipes right now are my Nooch Crispy Potato Chips. Oh my gosh, I love these. Like, I actually make them on the weekends when my husband and I are just hanging out. He might have his other not so great chips, but I will whip some of these up or with my sweet potato chips. Either one floats my boat. I absolutely love both of them. These are the kind of foods that I eat when, you know, I'm craving some type of like comfort food or when I'm, you know, exceptionally hungry because when we're hungry, you know, we're not thinking of something light. We're thinking of something that's going to, you know, hit it right on the head and make us feel nice and satiated. So potatoes are always a go-to in those scenarios. For me too, I also like just how potatoes kind of go with almost anything that I'm making on the side. So whether that's a plate of non-starchy veggies, you know, or a 
salad or even some of the sauces that I use on my veggies or my salads, you know, they actually go quite well on potatoes too. One of my favorite things that I still eat to this day is my Caesar potato salad. Like that one really kills me because for it having absolutely no overt fat in it whatsoever, it's quite shocking just how creamy and filling it tastes like almost like it does have fat in it, but it doesn't. Regular potatoes and sweet potatoes have been a huge part of my weight loss journey. Please do not fear them. I know we've heard lots and lots about, you know, carbs making us fat. Typically, when you hear that, they're talking more about refined carbs. But when we're talking about things like potatoes, you know, rice, beans, these type of carbs slash starches, they are all actually lower in calorie density. So as long as you're not using oils to prepare them or, you know, covering them in some type of dense, heavy, high fat type of sauce or dressing, then you're golden. You don't really have to worry too much about it. Now, with that being said, we do still need to be reasonable about portions because you cannot eat as much as you want of these starches and expect to lose weight. You still need to be reasonable, try to tap into those hunger and fullness cues and just finish when you've had enough. But you can overdo anything really. It doesn't matter if it's potatoes or anything. You can overdo anything and get yourself out of a calorie deficit, in which case you're not gonna lose any weight. So even with the starches, even with them being lower calorie density, please still be mindful of your portions because if you overeat, then you're not gonna lose any weight. Enjoy your potatoes and beans to make you full and keep you full, but at the same time, please don't buy into the hype of you can just literally eat as much as you want and still lose weight. I already have some videos on that, so I'm not gonna get into a full-fledged rant, but that's just a little side note. Just be mindful of your portions. All right, so the next one I'm going to talk about is one that I've recently been including a lot in my diet. I would say I started eating tofu um, around that 30, 40 pound mark. I started to include it back into my diet. A lot of you have asked, you know, with that first 30 pounds when I had just lost it, um, if I was eating tofu and I didn't eat any tofu. I don't even think I ate any at all, in fact, because I can't even remember if I did or not. So I really don't think I did. But at any rate, I have really, really been enjoying my homemade deli slices. Um, if you haven't seen this video, I recently put this one out showing the recipe for this. This hands down is one of my absolute favorite recipes right now. I just love the taste of it. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's just delicious. So I love eating it on its own as a snack with some veggies on the side or as a delicious sandwich. It tastes so good and obviously so much cheaper and healthier than buying the vegan, you know, store-bought fake meats. So I really encourage you to check this video out. And even if you don't like tofu, I feel like this is a recipe that could actually turn you on to tofu. And I've had a few people say that to me because sometimes with tofu, you don't really even know what to do with it. But when you find an amazing recipe, you will be blown away. So please, if you don't like tofu, just trust me, try this recipe and even let me know afterwards and let me know how it goes. But at any rate, I've been loving the deli tofu slices as well as my no chicken chicken bites, I guess. I don't know if there's a better name for it, but at any rate, that's what it reminds me of. It kind of reminds me of that, like little chunks of chicken or something, but it's definitely not chicken, um, but it's delicious. I have been absolutely loving this one as well. Now, with, with all that being said about tofu, I do want to add in here that I don't eat a lot of it as in the actual amount. So I do eat it very frequently right now, but I don't eat a lot at one sitting. And the reason for that is that I still try to keep my fat super low and tofu is one of those plant-based foods that are a little bit higher in the fat content. I have thoroughly been enjoying these, you know, no chicken chicken bites of mine, as well as my um, deli tofu slices. So that is another food that I am eating a lot on my weight loss journey. All right, so the next thing I wanna tell you about are my green smoothies. Now, I did make a video sharing my favorite, favorite green smoothie recipe. This one is so delicious, and there is a secret ingredient that I love using in my green smoothies, that if you don't like the taste of greens, this will help. So if you wanna check out that video to that recipe, I will have that linked in my description box below. But green smoothies have been a huge part of my weight loss journey too. I wouldn't say as much as the fiber protein shakes because those fiber protein shakes, they really are designed to keep me full. So I use them in a different way. And actually that's one of the reasons why I don't even put greens in those fiber protein shakes because I specifically want them to taste almost dessert-like. So I save my greens for my green smoothies. And don't worry, I got a ton of greens in between the smoothies and the salads. But 
Green smoothies are really important to me because of all the micronutrients that come from greens. And once again, much like the beans in the fiber protein shakes, I really enjoy and appreciate how easy it is for me to get my daily greens in through a green smoothie. I also have a really amazing recipe. Um, it's my red ruby smoothie, and that one has um, cranberries as well as beets in them and you can't taste the beets at all and beets are so so good for our health so that's another one that i drink very very often because cranberries in particular for women are extremely extremely healthy for us as well as the beets like the beets is probably a list a mile long about how amazing beets are for us so i just find that by you know, making these green smoothies, not all of them are technically green, but you know, these vegetable smoothies, that they're just a really easy, convenient way to get those nutrients in our body. And when it comes to my green smoothies, I am very mindful of making sure that they are on the lower calorie density side um, because I'm not using them as a meal. So often I will have them as, you know, a midday snack, or even sometimes I will use them as a non-starchy vegetable substitute with whatever meal that I'm eating. So instead of having a salad, I might just whip up a glass of green smoothie and have that with my potatoes or something instead. It doesn't have to be complicated. Now I did this all throughout the cold winter season, but I'm even more excited now that the warm weather is coming because it's even gonna be that much more easy and enticing to drink these smoothies and these shakes with the warmer weather coming. Now I'm personally just a really huge fan of shakes just for the convenience of them. And I just love knowing that I'm getting a really good punch of nutrition each time that I have one. In fact, I make these shakes and smoothies in my home every day for my children as well. And for me, in my mind, it's like kind of like some type of insurance policy, even into my kids' health that I'm like, okay, despite anything else that they're eating or not eating for me, um, I know that when I give them these green smoothies or these fiber protein shakes that they're getting a hit of nutrition and they love them. So they very rarely, rarely bring back an empty cup to me when I make these. So for me as a mom, that makes me feel good. So for both myself and my children, um, these shakes and these smoothies have been an incredible part of my health and weight loss journey. Okay, and the last one I wanna talk about is soup. So soup has always kind of been, you know, something that I've eaten in the past for weight loss, as well as even on this journey, I've eaten a lot of soup for weight loss. Now for me, Soup is definitely something that I enjoy when the season is colder. Um, so I did eat a lot of soup during those winter months, but now that we're entering into the warmer season, I don't know how much soup I'll be eating. I mean, I still love the taste of soup, but I don't like feeling hot. So the shakes and the smoothies are definitely sounding a lot more, you know, favorable at this point. <laughs> but as far as my weight loss journey went, I did eat a lot of soup. Um, some are non-starchy soups and some were starchy soups. My black bean fiesta soup was one of my absolute favorites. That's my daughter's favorite as well. My easy potato blender soup was another one I ate all the time. Um, my vanilla sweet potato soup, I just showed that one recently, I believe. And that one is delicious. That one's been a hit in my home for years, like over 10 or 15 years at this point. Um, so yeah, soups I just find are very similar similar to the shakes and stuff in the sense that they're just easy to kind of get a you know a punch of nutrition in all at the same time um, they're easy to whip up easy to make in advance easy to freeze and take out when you need it uh, so again it's just the convenience thing and when you're on a weight loss journey I find that you know the biggest thing is staying consistent but then you got to ask the question well how do I stay consistent and that is by making your life easier in every way that you can surrounding your weight loss journey. And so being prepped, being ready, having these easy to go meals, you know, especially freezer meals that you can just pull out, especially on a day that you're tired or you don't already have something prepared. That is what it's been about for me. So soup is definitely one of those things that just make my life easier when I already have a batch ready to go. And sometimes soup can just be as easy as you know, dumping some frozen veggies in a pot, you know, adding some onion, some garlic, covering it up with some water, and maybe throw some soup seasoning in there, bring it to a boil, and you've got a non-starchy soup, you know, or toss some potatoes in there, and now you have a beautiful, well-rounded vegetable and starchy soup. Now, if you are in need of some more soup recipes, there is a whole chapter of soup recipes in my newest weight loss recipe ebook as well. So they are in there if you need some, but again, there are so many recipes online. There are just so many ways that you can just empty out your freezer or your fridge and 
throw some water over it, bring it to a boil and call it a day and you got yourself a soup. Oh, and one last thing about the soup. One reason why I've always loved soup for weight loss is because of the water content. So you're just getting in a ton of water without a ton of calories, right? So it helps to keep you full without, you know, having to eat a ton of calories to do so. So that's why I think even, you know, historically soup has been an amazing thing for weight loss. Um, but it is true. It actually does keep you full, keeps you hydrated. And when made properly, it's not too calorie dense. But anyways, those are my five foods that I really feel have helped me get this 50 pounds off. And obviously there's even more foods than just those five foods. So I do encourage you to check out some of my other videos that I posted previously. Um, you know, and it's okay for our foods to change over time as well. You know, you don't have to stick to some type of like really strict military type diet for the rest of your life. I just kind of go with the flow. Like I don't try to set any type of strict guidelines or boundaries for myself. If I want to eat something all the time, I'll eat it all the time until I'm sick of it, you know? Um, or if I'm at the point where I just wanna switch it up, then I'm back in the kitchen trying to figure it out and start over from square one. So if you're also on a weight loss journey like me, then I would really encourage you to try to up your bean intake. I'm telling you those shakes are incredible. You cannot taste them. Um, as well as don't be afraid of potatoes, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, any potatoes to work just fine. As well as tofu, give it a chance again if you've already written it off. Trust me, those deli slices and those no chicken chicken bites oh they are amazing and those green smoothies to get those micronutrients in as well as soup to help keep you full and just the ease of it all if you found this video helpful today then i would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel then i would love to have you stick around so don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out and lastly don't forget about that awesome book sale three books for ten dollars a ton of recipes in there to support your health and weight loss journey again the link will be found in my description box below thanks so much for watching everyone and we will see you in the next one